I was just trying to think what uh, double act applied to Rupert and me, and the only one that came to mind was Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men. And, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I hope Rupert will keep the gobbledygook to a minimum so that uh, we can take you through to the next session. Um, OK, we're going to talk to you about our implementation of crime devices. And uh, I think it's important that we give you a little bit of a background. Um, we are, I can't read that one up there, my eyesight isn't good enough, so I'm going to have to turn around. Um, we're a London borough to the east. Uh, we provide uh, a, a full range of services, including education and social care. We're a, uh, we're a unitary uh, uh, local council. Um, we have about 3,500 people working across 60 sites, and considering Barking Dagenham is a very small place, that is clearly a problem for us. Um, and there would be a need in an ideal world to rationalize a little bit. Um, and in addition to that, many of our staff uh, work out in the community and therefore need mobile devices with them. Um, now, we have some significant challenges uh, ahead for us. Um, we've already faced uh, some very swinging cuts um, in our revenue, and we have to save another 40% in the three years from 1516. Now that's an awful lot of money, which means some of our services will have to save a lot more than that um, because some of, some of our statutory services um, won't be able to save as much. Um, so that's the context that we're working in. Um, we do have a vision. We have an ICT strategy, which our uh, council members approved last year. Um, fundamental to that is that the future is in the browser, okay, so that um, we would envisage uh, all of our line of business systems and all of our uh, activities for our employees to be accessed via a browser. We've believed in this for some considerable time and it fortuitously now we're in a position to start implementing uh, that vision. Cloud delivery models obviously go hand in hand with that. Um, we have our own data center at the moment. Its days are numbered. Our aim would be that we don't in the future. Um, and we can't afford the kind of traditional corporate ICT service um, that we have at the moment. Um, we're not going to be able to afford that in the future. Um, we're going to have to change to a utility model whereby we pay for our ICT um, as we need it and, uh, and for as much as we need it. So we have that scalability and elasticity um, to respond to the kind of pressures that we're faced with. Um, our existing ICT estate, um, 3,500 uh, desktops, um, 800 laptops, so you've immediately noticed we have more devices than we have people, which is a little bit of an issue. Um, they're all running Windows XP currently, um, which is a bit of a problem for us, um, especially as the government has made it quite clear we won't be allowed to connect to their, any of their services um, over, uh, from the next uh, few months onwards uh, if we're still running Windows XP. Um, and we have 200 plus line of business systems which have grown up uh, over many years to support such a wide range of services that we uh, deliver to the local community. However, we do have an existing large Citrix estate um, which is delivering remote desktop and published applications and that actually has um, stood us in good stead for uh, moving forward. So that's the, the, the challenge. My colleague Rupert, who is going to appeal to the extra second uh, among the goldfish out there uh, for your attention span, uh, to describe how we're going to deal with that. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, looking at the challenge of uh, Windows XP, we um, started looking into that uh, back end of, uh, well, the middle of last year and uh, started evaluating Chromebooks um, as a possible option, particularly bearing in mind that um, delivery model around uh, browser-based applications and something that was secure and simple and quick to use. Um, we secured the business case and have uh, pushed ahead with deploying um, what we're expecting to be about 2,000 um, of the Samsung 303s, which is the, that small, fairly light um, Chromebook. And in most cases, what we're planning to do is reuse the existing uh, screen, keyboard, and mouse on the on the desk. Bring them in, plug in the keyboard, um, and the aim is definitely much that they, very much that they become the default device for staff. Um, we're looking also at Chrome boxes, using them in meeting rooms, um, in kiosk kind of areas, reception desks, uh, in our libraries, that kind of thing. Q 
key to that is to deliver things using uh, Wi-Fi. So we've got a large rollout of Wi-Fi going across the, the organization to support that. So all these devices will be coming in via Wi-Fi. But we are also having to recognize that given that large number of legacy applications, so we, as Shane mentioned, support everything from people picking up litter off the streets to uh, children's social care. Um, we've got some very specialist applications and strange machines that talk to streetlights and do strange things like that. So um, we've got quite a, a, a set of legacy applications, a number of which we're never going to attempt to get onto Citrix. Um, so they're going to have to have some Windows 7 um, on, the, on the desktop as well. We've also got some other more transaction-focused uh, folks who do a lot of data processing using two dual screens. Um, and we've got issues around accessibility, staff of particular needs and things like that with uh, particular applications installed. So those are all the sorts of criteria that we're having to explore and make sure that we've got the right mix of kit um, uh, and will result in a significant chunk of um, Windows 7 devices still on the estate. Our primary route of accessing um, our applications then going forward, um, and we're in the process of rolling this out now, is uh, Citrix. We have an existing, as Shane mentioned, an existing Citrix estate, um, and we are uh, using that as the key delivery mechanism. So the, sh the Chromebooks are primarily going to be a thin client kind of access into that Citrix environment. Um, we're very much committed to that browser-based access, and we do have some of our line of business systems are browser-based at the moment. So um, in time, we are definitely aiming to bring more of those applications in via the browser so that um, we are less reliant on the Citrix estate, and our vision certainly would be that over the, the sort of hardware refresh cycle on our Citrix estate, by the time we need to make that sort of investment again, we're going to have far fewer users going through the Citrix environment. Um, and part of that as well is looking at things like Google Apps or Office 365 um, as an option around um, cloud email and Office tools. So one of the key drivers for us is security. Um, we have to comply with uh, guidance produced by an organization called CESG, who set the technical security standards for government. Um, and what really sort of enabled us to look quite seriously at Chromebooks was the publication by CESG of security guidance um, back in, ooh, I think it was about October of last year. And this ticked various boxes that we were very keen on and um, made CESG comfortable about Chromebooks. So uh, the hard drive encryption, the secure boot, TPN chips, and the auto-initiation of VPN. And what we've needed to do to meet those requirements and what we've chosen to do actually is to implement the Chromebooks um, for operation in the office environment and when they're uh, within our buildings in exactly the same way as when people work from home. So the log-on experience will be consistent and the same. And this makes use of what CSG calls a walled garden model. So it's a VPN in and then a mediation layer, which in our case is uh, Citrix, and in time will bring in web proxy to support more of those um, web interfaces. So benefits. Um, in our world, we're already seeing, uh, in the, the original business case, um, a significant saving on the hardware cost replacement. So um, the cost over replacing our old desktop model. We've also, as uh, you saw from the numbers, um, succeeded in eliminating the duplication. So we used to have um, staff out there with who would have a desktop PC. We had a hot desking model, so we also had hot desking areas set up with desktop PCs. And then staff were also issued a laptop on top of that. So you ended up with this huge ratio of far more devices uh, than staff. Um, by bringing in the, the Chromebooks, we're able to eliminate that, have far fewer devices in total. Another interesting one that we um, must confess we kind of stumbled on afterwards, actually, was about the electricity savings. So the Chromebooks running around 40 watts the desktop PCs that we've currently got are running in more like 280 watts. And then you do a bit of maths and you come up with a rather large number. Um, so that key piece then really is that, that security, the simplicity of the setup, and uh, the flexible working. And one of the big ways that uh, the council can deliver further savings is through reducing the number of buildings that we've got. And if we can have staff working more flexibly, more able to work from home, we don't need as many desks set up and uh, as many buildings set aside for, for staff. And that's the other uh, key benefit that we're, we're expecting to see. I think that's... One more thing, that um, uh, there's not a lot to be excited about at the moment in the public sector, especially in local government, but we are very excited about this. And I think uh, it's some time, actually, um, 
since we've been able to get so uh, enthusiastic uh, about a, a different way forward and breaking out of the continual refresh cycle that we've been in uh, for so many years. So we are really very excited about what's happening. Thanks so much.